Well, I don't, what, what do people hear what I do? do? Do you want to ask questions or say something else? And do you want it to be videoed or shall I just stop with what has already uh, been you, said? You can video it if you want, Will. Okay. Well, that's for me. I want to ask how I can tap on that. Right, what you do is you get a class based calculator which can basically it can solve quadratic equations and simultaneous equations and all the functions in that GCSE. Where do you get them? Um, on the internet, they're 20 quid. What do I need to do? You need to put a 991 ES <laughs> calculator. And what it will do is it will pass you on a grad, it will get you about a grade 6. It won't get you the full, it won't get you, the, the exam system now goes up to 9. But the, that calculator by itself will get you a 6. Ah, because it will get you through a foundation exam. Because all you have to do is, to, what it does is, it can solve equations numerically. Um, so it can give you the right answer. And it is terribly easy in that. If you know what the right answer is, it's terribly easy to look like you've worked it out for yourself. Yeah, and then you can look. And, uh, but, uh, all you need to know is a piece of how to write it down. <laughs> uh, and you will get the right answer. And so what it can do is it can do simultaneous, it can do quadratic, it can do mode, mean, and median. So it can do enough of the syllabus to get you through. Oh, it can do ratios if you can be asked. Um, it, it's got, it's typically, it's all there, it's down, but it's got a very, it's not, it's not even very complicated. But what's going on there is that kids are brought up on, cal on, on phones. And if this calculator looked like a phone, it would have been banned. But it doesn't, it looks like a calculator. And so that means most kids who are year 10 or year 11 face with something that looks like a calculator. So it's an LDC display, it's slightly old fashioned. Won't go <coughs> And, there's, and I've spent my life to take, uh, teaching kids to go on technology, which is, if you think about it, given the way we think about technology in kids, absolutely ironic. Because they're all got computers, and they're all much better with their iPhones. They know how to turn their iPhone on, which is more than I do. And when my phone rings, they all press the button that allows me to answer the phone, because I don't know where it is. But where it comes to a calculator, none of them go near it. And so you have this very strange system where you've got an exam that's banking on kids not learning how to use something that they've got to learn because the exam is weak, it's got this flaw in it. Right. And they explicitly did it. That's the strange thing about it. So the GCSE up to 2016 banned certain calculators. It would have banned the 991 um, because it would have banned anything that could solve a quadratic equation. Right. Um, and they changed that specification. You're actually allowed a graphics calculator into a GCSE exam, but uh, don't take one in in case you ever get the chance because they're crap. You need to do any of them bits and bobs pop. Are you better off with a phone? But um, you're not allowed to take a phone in. You're not allowed to take a phone in. Now, one of the curious things about it is that all the technology they allow is very old school. So they only allow stuff that is not terribly user friendly, apart from the 991, which is terribly user friendly if you know the right buttons to press. Um, but you do. Uh, graphics calculators came in when I first started teaching 27 years ago and they haven't changed in 27 years. They've only just gone colour. Um, I can get, what, if you want my opinion, what they should allow you to do, by the way, is I think that the education system ought to buy up old iPads and, they, um, and then strip out all the, mob, all, the, all the GE technology so that they just become just pad, just pad, just Wi Fi, and then turn off the school Wi Fi. Because then you would have the world's, they would have really powerful graphics computers. Um, and if you actually want to have an exam that actually tests how you're going to use maths in everyday life, that is what you would do. And if kids were downloading clever apps, then they're clever, then they're clever kids. Mm -hmm. um, um, but one of the strange things about uh, this exam and all the other GCSEs up into 1991 is it seemed to me that they didn't, adults didn't trust their ability to ask sensible, clever questions. Actually. So it's very, it's very easy in maths to ask a crossword question. So you can kind of generate um, difficulty by just saying, well that means that, that means that, that means that, that means that. And it's like a crossword clue. Or you can actually ask real world questions. And actually the, the gift of asking right questions is, is quite hard. Um, and one of the things I actually think adults have is a, is a deep lack of confidence in asking the kids sensible questions. But that's probably a different story. But anyway, 991 ES and it will get you through. I mean, I have a friend that she needs a maths GCSE for her jobs, but she's failed three times. Nine nine one yes. But yeah, so now. No, no, she can get the nine nine one yes. I said, what is it? It's not even relevant to her job though. It doesn't matter. But she needs. 
she needs to, and she'll need to get a grade five. If she misses the passes it this year, she'll need to get a grade five next year. So it gets worse. Um, but as I said, this but you don't. It's crazy. She doesn't use the skill in the job. No, no, but it's an initiation right? It's a scar. It's it's it's, it's the, the equivalent of circumcision. That that is where you have. That's what you're looking at. Is mental circumcision. You're looking that that because the, and if you look at how we think about G, uh, GCSE, when you're going into a padaya, you're in this dangerous state. It's all about you. That's great initiation right? It's straight out of the nineteenth century. Um, to such a point, when you're reading the, when I read the anthropology of the nineteenth century, I'm sitting there thinking, you're not talking about this tribe. You're talking about how you study for an exam, and you're applying it back to the tribe. But it's crazy, and that has got what a lot lot worse. Just as it doesn't has to, it just it could get better, and it's a very strange situation. Do Do you have any idea what's happening with English or media and that, that, those areas? English has gone the same way. So English, you have to recognise all kinds of things. Like anybody know what a drum do is? No. It's absurdly applause. Anybody? Uh, and there's all kinds of what I don't even. Uh, there, there's the difference between. Uh, I only know them because I'm old enough to have read down with school. And Nigel Molesworth is forced to learn the parts of grammar, the Gurundivs attacking the peaceful pronouns. Um, so because I read down with school, I actually know my parts of speech. <laughs> you really do well. <laughs> yeah, but unless you had read down with school, you wouldn't have the foggiest notion of what any of this stuff was. <laughs> um, so English has gone that way. Um, I don't know what's happened with science. Science has just changed the new system. It's meant to have got more rigorous. I, um, one of the things they're doing, I'll give you an uh, one is that there's been a traditional way you've taught things in terms of triangles. Uh, speed, distance, time. Speed, uh, speed, distance, time. You can draw them. And you, and you, one of the things they've done across all the subjects is they want to use it in terms of algebra. It is in terms of, it's, it's like a hieroglyph. You can draw a hieroglyph and it'll solve it for you. And they try, and they, they officially made it an, uh, a markable wrong if you use that's the standard method that every teacher has always taught for the last 20 years. Now, you might have noticed I said 20 years, I've been teaching for 27 years, seven years uh, before that we didn't use it. Um, and it's great, it's great, and this exam season, I, there have been some appalling exams, but because I was taught by an Edwardian maths teacher, I was taught by somebody in her 90s, I was taught these really old-fashioned methods, and actually if you use very old-fashioned methods again, the exam is a bit simple. Because you just have to use maths that's 100 years old, and then it's easy. And then you sit there going, well, what the fuck? I mean, this, this exam is being created because of the way we teach it makes it hard. Why? Why are we doing this? <laughs> There's no point. And what's more, my Edwardian methods are not better. They're actually harder to understand. It just happens to be I had an Edwardian math teacher. They're in short supply now. Unless you have somebody who can commune with one, you're not going to get it. Never mind, I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're getting very enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But it is, it is the entire thing has ended up as beyond crazy, um, and it's not. And you listen. One of those things I spend my life listening for is the, is the Labour Party <coughs> on GCSE. There isn't one, in case you wondered. I just spent my life listening, time listening for it. They haven't said what they were going to do. Um, and actually, for me, that's actually quite a big problem. I mean, Angela Rayner is a very serious, competent politician. She ought to have a policy in Massachusetts. Um, but what, in effect, has happened in the short term, one last point I'll finish, much worse than the NHS, is that, in effect, what is happening is that uh, education has been privatised. Because if you've got a system, you, the internet isn't quite mature enough yet. Um, you've got schools that can't teach it, and so what you have to do is invoke people like me, being time in mass education, so to get through an exam, everybody is paying somebody. Mm. Um, so it, that is actually privatisation, and it's already happened, um, and nobody talks about it, and it's happened because of the exam change. And again, I'm off the topic again. But so thanks to Michael Cove. Michael Cove. Michael Cove. It's Cove. It's going. Uh, the world is not small enough, it's too small for the number of tortures I wish to do to the man. He sounds like an idiot. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, John. Don't get me on him. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, anyway, yes, I, I could email him. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's an opportunity, he is an idiot. He's an idiot. Yeah, it's uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's an idiot, but what he is, is. Uh, anyway, 
I think yeah. I really doesn't. I probably have to get back to my space for for Shane is holding the space at the moment. Okay. Well, look, thank, thank you for coming on. Thank you. 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 Thank you.